Kenya is listed as having the highest number of tech startups in Africa. The tech space, also dubbed as Silicon Savannah, is worth $1 billion. One entrepreneur found a niche in the Rift Valley region. Today, we meet Magdalene Chepkimoy, the founder and director of Elder Hub, a tech startup incubation hub in Eldoret. From the home of champions, this is Founders Connect Africa. Hi, how are you? I'm good. Thank you so much That's for awesome. having us today. So this is uh, Elder Hub. Yeah, this is Elder Hub. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, good stuff. And they can see the whole of Eldred from this space. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Wow. Wow. Interesting. Thank you so much for giving us. Probably we can now have a seat and talk about what Elder Hub does um, as you give me a, a little brief about yourselves. Thank you so much. Welcome to Eldoret, yes. the city of champions. Yeah, the and city of champions. Yep, yep. And welcome to Elder Hub as well. Yes. What do you, do you want us to offer you? We have coffee, we have tea. Mm -hmm. If you want Mursik as well, we can order it somewhere. Mursik, I've never had Mursik, but let's, uh, let's do coffee for today. Okay. Purity, please get us coffee. Wow, home of champions, and now you you have a lot of tech um, companies coming out of here. This is very interesting um, to know that there are many tech startups coming out. Uh, but before we go to the tech startups, let's talk about Eldo, Eldo Hub. Um, how did it start? What exactly does Eldo Hub do? We support youth and women to start and grow businesses by leveraging our technology. So we have programs like STEM education, entrepreneurship lessons, online work, job matching, and apprenticeship. Mm -hmm. We also run uh, through our entrepreneurship lessons, we have entrepreneurship uh, development programs, mm -hmm. and we incubate startups to bring their ideas to life. In Eldoret, you know, that's, this is shocking to me that there are many startups in Eldoret. Maybe you can tell us how many startups are you working with right now? Uh, since we started, we've been able to work with uh, over 30 startups. But um, currently we are working with uh, 12 startups and uh, so many of them are uh, tech enabled startups. But then we also have a few of them who are uh, working on traditional businesses but looking to digitize their businesses or incorporate their technology in their businesses. Yeah. So you start with a tech, with a tech um, startup from the beginning till the finish line where they launch their product. Absolutely, from ideation yeah. to uh, testing, their, developing their minimum viable product, prototyping, all the way to taking their products to the market. Oh wow, very interesting. Um, let's, uh, before we dive deep into that, tell me about yourself, is tech or has tech always been something that you've always wanted to do? Yeah, absolutely. I've always loved uh, technology and uh, I grew up in the rural village and uh, when I went to high school, that was the first time when I encountered computers and from the first time I saw computers, I really loved computers mm -hmm. and I've grown into loving computers and, you know, working in the ICT industry. Mm -hmm. But of course, as a woman in technology, you would also expect a uh, backlash and sometimes, mm -hmm. especially when you're choosing your career. So I think it's very important if I mention that, especially also in terms of encouraging yeah. other young women. Yeah. Yeah, so um, after, high, after high school, I had really passed very well in, uh, in maths and all the sciences. So when I told my parents and my relatives that I have an intention of pursuing a career in sciences, they objected. They really never, they thought that, you know, that's something which um, uh, it's only meant for men and, yeah. you know. In tech. In yeah, technology. in tech, yeah. yeah. So uh, I, in, they discouraged me and they even stuck, they, they called a meeting, some of my relatives discouraged me. Mm -hmm. But of course, I went ahead and did computer science and later <laughs> graduated. <laughs> so you see, there are those, you know, due to lack of information and, you know, uh, sometimes, peop uh, sometimes 
they would want to influence the way we choose our careers. Yeah. But it's usually they have a very good intention, but of course due to lack of information, that's the direction they wanted me to take. Wow. Yeah, so uh, this is the reason why I'm telling you that is because uh, that's part of the reason why uh, I started uh, uh, Eldo Hub, uh, just to support uh, young we youth and women and to focus more on, um, do, to also excel in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, yeah. And, um, you know, growing up in the rural village, there are not much opportunities in the village, unlike, you know, in Nairobi. So when I cleared school, I saw IHUB, I saw other organizations, mm -hmm. you know, supporting youth and, you know, young people having great opportunities in Nairobi. So I decided, you know what, one day I will one day go back mm -hmm. and, you know, support more young people and also create an enabling environment for young people to grow, yeah. to build their own startups, to create jobs for themselves and also even to get guidance on how they can excel in the digital economy. Okay. Yeah. Please enjoy your coffee. Oh, okay. Yeah, the coffee is here. Yeah. Karibu. Okay, so you have officially decided that you're going to do technology, computer technology, and you have left school. Yeah. What happened after? So what happened after, um, of course, I, after graduating from university, I moved to Nairobi, just like any other youth, mm. to look for greener pastures. You know, we always think that the, the city is where we can excel. So I went to Nairobi, and like I said, I found that so, so many opportunities, you know. I used to attend an uh, entrepreneurship program and all other programs that exist. And um, that's where I decided, you know what, I just need to start now. If I don't start, I might not be able to start, so I came back home and decided mm. that. And decided um, you yeah. to start. Yes. Did yes, you yes. ever try to? I know this is an innovation hub, but did you ever try your hand in starting a tech business? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. In fact, too. Uh -huh. um, after uh, you know, I did computer science and uh, I went to Strathmore University and did uh, mobile telecommunication and innovation through Safaricom Academy at mm -hmm. I Love Africa. So. Um, from there, I had developed a mobile application called Twende Shule, mm -hmm. more like an Uber, but for parents to, um, to sh parents to share the responsibility of uh, uh, picking and dropping their kids uh, from school. Yeah, but of course, you know, technology needs trust. So uh, parents were like skeptical of, you know, leaving their children with other people, other parents, you know, mm. they were worried about, you know, being influenced by other kids influencing their children badly or something like that. Mm. So, um, you know, that's why it didn't go well. Yeah. Okay. Then uh, we had also worked. So it, it failed? Definitely it failed, which How is part of entrepreneurship. <laughs> <laughs> How long did you work on it? I worked on it like almost a year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and you realized it's not yeah, going anywhere. It was not good. It, um, it, it, uh, I think it's because of lack of resources yeah. and the support which now Elder Hub is provide, yeah. providing. And yeah. uh, that's why it didn't go well. Yeah, but then also we had um, another group which uh, we formed a group and, uh, and form another organization called Pinafia and uh, did a pitch at Strathmore University through uh, C. Duke Agathon and we won, but unfortunately we were not able to proceed because of, um, you know, team dynamics. We were five, I think we were seven, five to seven, uh, um, yes, five to seven founders, so that didn't work really well. So, you know, well, when working in a startup, you need to hold up, share the same values, the yeah. same vision, and the same mission. So that's why uh, it didn't, didn't go work. well. Yeah. Okay. So after that is when you decided to yeah. come to Eldorate and, and launch Eldo Hub. How did the idea come about? Yes, yeah, so um, it came about because there were no much opportunities outside Nairobi. You know, there are so many opportunities, so many education, technology, platforms that young people can leverage on in the city. There's so many innovation hubs in Nairobi and all the other places. So I felt that, you know, the youth in the Western region were being left out. So I decided, you know what, I'm going to be part of the solution in terms of supporting young people and creating an enabling environment. And you know, Eldoret provide a big pool of young people. We have big universities, uh, TVET institutions around here, and um, so many young people are hungry for um, 
you know, um, opportunities and, you know, and uh, being prepared to benefit from the ICT opportunities that the digital economy is uh, offering. So that's why we really wanted to support so, uh, young people. I oh. wanted to support young people in Eldoret and that's okay. why I came here. How did you even find out that there's a potential in the in Eldoret? Because we know people in Eldoret just loves to run and, and win. So now that, um, how did you know that there are tech startups and how did you find a niche for yourself in this, in this market? Yes, yeah, so um, the first thing when I came here was to work, uh, of course, uh, talk to as many people as possible and uh, go to different universities. I was lucky enough because uh, because I have my, a master's in, uh, in, from Strathmore University, so it was easier for me to look for a teaching job in yes. the local universities. Yeah. <laughs> so I started by teaching on a part-time basis. So I connected with so many youth, and I also used that opportunity to get more information on what's needed, more like conducting a need analysis, whether this is what people from Eldoret really want or not. So you did research? Yeah, I did a research, a need analysis research. Yeah. yeah, so I went to Catholic University, I went to Kisi University, Moi University, Chep Koilel, and um, connected with as many young people as possible. I also connected with the local um, entrepreneurs um, and um, also, also local leaders around and uh, ask them if this is something, just got question and you know, interview them and get to know really is this what they want. So after that, uh, we started the Elder Hub Monthly Innovation Forums, so where we used to go to different um, institutions. Uh, so that's uh, inviting different uh, mentors and facilitators. And from my network, uh, so many uh, people from my network, even from Nairobi, were coming and you know, supporting what I do. And, um, and through the Elder Hub Innovation uh, uh, Forums. So I went to different universities. And after that now, the, I saw the need of now establishing uh, a space because there was a need. So that's when we officially started in 2017. Okay. Yeah. So you saw a space. I have seen um, you have a lot of um, partners. Um, maybe you can mention some of your partners and how you came about to um, get them. All right. Yes, yeah, so um, we have partnered with uh, the US uh, Embassy through our project, which is called No Thrift Women in STEM that aims to empower we, women, youth, uh, women and girls to, um, to excel in or pursue careers in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And we were targeting five counties, that's Nandi County, El Keomara, West Pokot, Samburu, and um, Uasingishu County, yeah. So those are the five counties we are targeting and supporting women in terms of digital skills, you know, online jobs, and also women in terms of entrepreneurship. So that's uh, where we partnered with uh, the US Embassy through Alumni Engagement Innovation Fund. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that came through uh, a program called the Mandela Washington Fellowship, which I am a 2018 Mandela Washington Fellow, mm -hmm. which is also another program by the US uh, government, which take over 700 uh, young people to the US and place them in different universities and they are given guidance on in terms of entrepreneurship and all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so through that network, I was able to connect with uh, so many people and so many also companies. Mm -hmm. And that's why uh, the, we, yeah, that's why we pitched our idea. We came as a group and we got the North Rift Women in STEM program. Mm -hmm. So we, and through also the Mandela Washington Fellowship, I was, able to be selected uh, through a business speech um, to Elder Hub was selected to be part of the USADF uh, um, Yali Fund. Yes, so uh, you, which USADF stands for United States Africa Development Foundation. So, and that came through the Mandela Washington Fellowship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, wow. and also we have currently have a partnership with the UK Kenya Tech Hub. Uh, we're running a project called uh, Digital Apprenticeship uh, Program where we are supporting 40 junior tech professionals and placing them in local organizations that's in SME startups 
uh, tech startups or uh, traditional based businesses who are looking to digitize their businesses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we've already, currently we've already matched all the 40 with host businesses. And uh, the aspect of the program also, it has mentorship where we are working with different organizations like uh, Cisco, we have Liquid Telco and uh, other organizations who we are working together just to support young people and provide them with experiential learning. Wow, that is a lot you're doing. <laughs> yeah, we, we also, yeah. we also partnering with, uh, now that I've mentioned uh, Liquid Telco, we are partnering with Liquid Telco mm -hmm. through 21C Skills Africa mm -hmm. platform, uh, where we are training uh, young people on the latest tools and technologies like artificial intelligence, IoT, and mm -hmm. all that, just for them to benefit from the opportunities the digital economy offers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, um, that program we currently have around 52 students that we are supporting through the platform mm. yeah okay good stuff good stuff wow yeah, so let's talk about the tech <laughs> the tech space mm -hmm. in kenya mm -hmm. um kenya is known to be number one in tech um Absolutely. the tech hub of africa yeah um where do you see the tech space running in, in kenya going forward yeah so um, going forward I see more of um, ed tech uh, platforms <laughs> coming out of um, the tech space because there is a need really to localize. Um, we, we know that there is Udemy and all the other international platforms that we can use and we can, um, we can support young people. But then also in the tech space, I see more of, uh, we need more platforms in terms of education to educate the young people. And apart from just educating them, we need to link them to job opportunities because it is not enough to provide just training. And uh, even based on the programs that we've been running, the digital apprenticeship program, you see that you know, big organizations like Safaricom or other organizations might not um, want to, to take up, yeah. yeah, to take up maybe juniors, yeah. And that's where local now SME small startups can benefit from this tech talents uh, from uh, mm -hmm. from the universities yeah but then also from other big organizations supporting those tech talents yeah. Okay. yeah um from 2017 to now you have told me you have over 30 um, startups which is your favorite startup to work with that you think about and say wow i was part of that project yeah. absolutely so we have a plus farm Plus Farm is uh, one of the best startups uh, here in Eldoret that we've worked with. And uh, for the fact that they are supporting uh, small older farmers, uh, giving them a platform to manage their farm. And um, they currently have over 100 uh, star uh, uh, farmers. Over and farmers. Yes, yes, yes. So we are very happy that uh, we were part of the process in terms of uh, supporting them and um, helping them to uh, start uh, the the project so that's kind of our, our su success, story. success story they recently got some funding i don't know maybe you could i i saw something like that that they recently got funding yeah yeah they've got a, um, yeah they've been able to raise uh, over five million kenya shillings in terms of funding and uh, i'm sure that they will keep uh, uh, raising fund but then uh, the main aim is not really it's not really about raising funds I believe that it's more about uh, building something which people want. Yeah, so, yeah, building something which people want at the end of the day. So it's in terms of sustainability, let the funding comes as a bonus, maybe to help you in terms of cash flows and all that. Mm -hmm. But then at the end of the day, it's you know, what value are you providing to these farmers and yeah. all that. So, uh, yeah. and they are in the right yeah. direction in terms of you know creating value. That's why they have over 100 farmers. and. You know, with support that they need, they can be able to expand and scale. Yeah. And scale. And scale. Um, okay, so that was the best. There were other companies that probably didn't make the cut. Um, what were the problems that you saw in some of the tech startups that were unable to um, reach the space where you, would, you wanted them to be? Yeah, one of the things is uh, people really not understanding what they want to work with. Like, for example, they don't understand what is their mission, what is their vision, you know, what are the values. And, you know, once you understand your mission, vision and values, you can be able to attract the right people to work with. 
and you know if you don't have the right people to work with definitely you cannot uh, succeed in your business yeah yeah. So that's what. That's one of them. Yeah, that's one of them. Another thing is um, developing a product which people don't want, and you know, and thinking for the for the for the for, for your audience. For, yeah, thinking <laughs> for your audience. It's yeah. it's you know, entrepreneurship is more like an experiment. Yeah. So if people can do more experiments and you know, taking this a bit of the product to the users to taste it then you know from the feedback that they get they can be able to keep improving it until they get a product with market fit yeah, yeah so wow. product market fit is really something it's the holy grail yeah product market fit what is next for elder hub so what's next for elder hub is now so you know now when since 2017 when we started uh, we have more like you know teething issues and just like any other company and I believe that Elder Hub, we've really grown organically. <laughs> and uh, yeah, because we didn't have funding initially. It came after we've, you know, we really we've, we've really started and, you know, we were already working with individuals, young people who can, you know, even make pay or sometimes even commit their um, funds to, 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 because they see the value, they see the value, yeah. they see the value in what we do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so that's, so where I see Elder Hub is more like we want to build Elder Hub as an education technology platform, supporting young people, youth and women between the age of 18 and 35 in the Western region of Kenya. Yeah. So go to the Kitale and the, and the rest of the region. Kitale, Elgeo, yeah. Marakwet, you yeah. know, even Bomet and yeah. the other areas yeah. as well to, yeah. yeah. To make sure that all those ideas are brought to life. Wow, well, thank you so much. You're very brilliant. <laughs> very interesting, very interesting space. And thank you so much for opening doors for us and we wish you all the best. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right.